all right so in the observational data analysis context now i'm going to talk about balance and how to measure balance um, let me consider this research question this um, outcome being hard data exposure being rheumatoid arthritis and we are comparing um, with people who do not have rheumatoid arthritis but we are also excluding patients who have other kind of arthritis or who are young uh, people generally so our research question is whether or not adult patients with rheumatoid arthritis are at increased risk of heart attack in united states preferably so in that case our dag would look like look like this right if we are doing a randomized clinical uh, trial we will have a our exposure variable or rheumatoid arthritis we will have our y um, whether they have heart attack or myocardial infarction and there could be some adjustment variable but those are not confounded because the link between the l and a would be broken by the process of randomization right so in a randomized clinical trial what we would see say for example for a variable like age when we um, cross tabulate with the exposure variable a so this is a cross tabulation between a and l l is age and a is whether they have rheumatoid arthritis or not if you do that in a randomized clinical trial that has enough sample size you will see a good balance and what do i mean by this balance see here 30 percent versus 32 percent in the exposed versus unexposed group 43 versus 42 exposed versus unexposed group 24 versus 26 exposed versus unexposed group so there is a balance row wise in here right by balance I'm, I'm no, I am not saying that they, they will be exactly the same there, there might be some variation but visually when you see at this table you will say that there is a balance generally speaking all right so rheumatoid arthritis has very low prevalence and this is also a chronic disease so you will have to follow the patients for a very long time to watch the outcome the myocardial infarction or heart attack right so doing a randomized clinical trial might not be feasible and what is the alternative obviously we have this alternative of having lot of access to the healthcare data set from hospitals and electronic healthcare data set for billing purposes but the problem is we do not have the luxury of randomization anymore the link between l and a will be there when we are analyzing the observational data set that means what that means age will be a determining factor for a person to be in the rheumatoid arthritis group or not and then this l or age will be also a determining factor for having heart attack or not so in that case say for example um, a is our exposure y is our outcome and l is the age variable we can simply adjust for this age variable to get this link broken right so if we we adjust for this l variable then the association between a and y will be unconfounded so just by taking a look at the data without any prior knowledge is there a way to say whether age is a confounder or not usually 
just empirically looking at the data set and arriving at a conclusion that that variable is a confounder versus that variable is not a confounder that kind of decision making based on looking at the exact data that you are going to analyze to assess your assessor association of interest the exposure versus the outcome is not a good practice but it is still possible to loosely say whether the age variable is imbalanced or not so when i'm saying it uh, this age variable is a confirmed or not and I'm trying to determine that from a data set That's not a good practice, but still I can take a look at the data set and figure out whether the distribution is balanced or not Do you think by looking at this table 63 versus 23 26 versus 52 11 uh, person versus 25 percent do you think this this looks balanced so 63 and 23 percent are obviously two different types of number <laughs> but at which point you are going to say that the, there is some imbalance there, there, there is supposed to be some sort of cut point right so in statistics there are some measures um, that can be useful in determining such imbalance um, and one of those is if you are dealing with a continuous variable you can use the standardized mean difference which is basically the mean of the rheumatoid arthritis group minus the mean of the rheumatoid arthritis group divided by, by the uh, corresponding variances and their pool of variances if on the other hand you are dealing with a binary variable instead of the mean you can deal with the proportions so you can take the difference in proportion and divide by the standard deviation of that and this idea is known as the standardized mean difference it can be for uh, the continuous variable for the categorical variable or the binary variable so we are going to use this smd or standardized mean difference idea more and more when we are trying to get some idea about whether a variable is balanced or not let us try to take a look at one example so we were talking about age and arthritis versus rheumatoid arthritis right uh, non-arthritis versus rheumatoid arthritis and we were saying that this is not balanced by our judgment and we calculate this SMD for this age group and we find an SMD of 0.891 we calculate the SMD for smoking we find 0.212 we calculate the SMD for diabetes it is 0.4 something we calculate it for gender it is 0.2 something so at which point we are going to say that this is imbalanced so in the literature generally speaking people suggest to use the SMD of 0 0.1 but in here we are using the SMD of 0 0.2 which is a more relaxed um, standardized mean difference cut point even with that relaxed cut point you can see all of these variables are imbalanced does it mean that because they are imbalanced they are confounder no they are just imbalanced that's all this SMD can tell you all right so what do we do when imbalance exists generally speaking if you are sure that from subject area knowledge that those variables that are found to be imbalanced such as gender diabetes smoke and age variable if you know from the literature that those are confounders not any type of mediator or collider or any other type of variable so if you know that generally speaking we try to adjust them when we do not adjust them say for example if we run a logistic regression model on the myocardial infarction and 
rheumatoid arthritis versus no arthritis this result will be biased because we already know that there are some imbalance and based on subject area knowledge that we know that these are confounders so this is obviously not going to give us the correct odds ratio to correct them we need to adjust for the variables that we think are confounders so in there we adjust for those variables generally speaking if you have an imbalance variable you, you might want to check whether you need to adjust for them whether those are the right variables to adjust and then you adjust for them in your regression analysis and this is just one way to get your adjusted odds ratio correct thank you